Hey everybody, in this video we're going to continue making our very first game in Unity. In the last episode of the series we already looked at how we can set Unity up, how we can import assets and how we can build a map. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a character that we can control and uh, this character will be able to run across the screen and he will also be able to jump. We're going to create a placeholder for our character by right clicking in the project hierarchy, going to 2D object, then to sprites, capsule, and you'll see that it has inserted this capsule in the middle of our screen. It's a bit hard to see because it's just as wide as the clouds. But uh, yeah, we're going to rename this capsule and we're going to call it player. All right, now we can go ahead and move this player to the starting location which is going to be right next to the tree. And as you see, we still need to assign a different layer to it because it's behind our ground block at the moment. So let's go ahead and assign it a different layer in the sprite renderer over here. We're going to say that it's got an order and layer of, hold on, two I think it was, or we'll go with three. Yeah, we'll go with three. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to make him a little bit bigger. So we're gonna scale him up. Ah, uh, there we go. That's gonna make him a bit bigger. All right, now that we have our placeholder for our character, the next thing we want to do is we want to add some gravity to this guy. Uh, at the moment, if I press on play, you'll see that we just have this white capsule and nothing happens. But now watch what happens if I add a component. Specifically, I'm going to add the component rigid body, 2D. And after I've done that and saved it and pressed play, you'll see that the capsule now falls right through our map. So we've applied gravity to it, but we still need to apply some sort of mechanism that allows us to have the capsule land right on the tile and not fall through the map because we don't want our player falling through the map either. So let's go ahead and add some um, box colliders to this. So box collider 2D. Um, now we've added it to the um, capsule. We also need to add the box collider to the grass tiles. We're going to go the old fashioned way and add the box collider 2D um, to each one of these boxes individually. Box collider 2D and the third one box collider 2D. So we can now change the outline. As you can see, there's like these green outlines around the box and we're going to make the box collider go to the middle of the tile for all three of these tiles. And now watch what happens if I press play again after assigning box colliders to both the player as well as the tiles. You can see that the capsule doesn't fall through the map anymore, but instead it lands on top of the um, hitbox. Now let's go ahead and try and add some movement to our capsule. So when we press the arrow keys, we of course want the player to move. So we're gonna press on the capsule, close down all of these individual components and add a new one. And specifically, we're going to add a script, script component, new script, and we're going to call this script movement. And when we open up this movement script, like so, it will open up in Virtual Studio. And I just want to mention that if Virtual Studio does not open up for you, then uh, that means you either do not have Virtual Studio um, installed or you don't have it set as the default editor. So make sure in the Unity settings that it is set as the default editor and you have it installed. Okay, perfect. So the next thing we want to do is we need to add the code that allows us to move our uh, capsule. So we're going to give our player three possibilities to move. We're going to have left and right movement as well as a jump motion. So let's go ahead and start off by creating a new header component um, with a rigid body. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste the code in so just that it's a bit faster and you don't uh, <laughs> see me typing the entire time. So I've gone ahead and added that in. 
Then after adding the rigid body header, we are going to go ahead and initialize uh, the rigid body in the start function. After that's done, we're going to go to the update function, which runs every time, um, which runs every frame. And we're going to first declare some inputs. And the inputs are going to be pretty simply um, space, the right key and the left key. Space key is going to be used for jumping. And the right and left keys are going to be uh, used to move the player to the left and to the right. Then after that, we are going to create a um, uh, force that is added to the player when we press on the right key. Uh, and this force will move the player to the right. So let's go ahead and add that. So in this if statement, whenever the right key is pressed, we have a log which writes uh, that the right key is pressed. And in addition to that, we add a force to the player which pushes him to the right. Now we do the same thing for the left hand side and we have the movement to the right and to the left sorted. The next thing we want to do is we want to have the player jump. So we're going to say that if the space button is uh, pressed, then uh, we want the character to jump. Now this is going to cause a bit of an issue in a moment, but uh, I'm just going to show you um, nevertheless, what the issue is, because um, we'll uh, learn something along the way. So let me save what I have in the editor at the moment and close it down. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the rigid body component um, that I have over here over into the component of my script. And now you can see that the player rigid body is assigned to the script. And if I go ahead and press play now, uh, let's see what happens when I press the arrow key. So I'm gonna press the arrow key and I think it's going to move pretty fast, so pay attention. So I'm gonna press it right now. And you can see the player has flung right off our screen because the force that we've added is a bit too high. But let's try that again and let's try pressing space now. And you can see that the player moves right off the screen right um, away uh, because uh, he's flung up with a force that's way too high. Now, how can we avoid this from happening? We want the player to, of course, stay on the screen. We can add some mass to our player. Over here in the rigid body 2D options, you can see a mass, and we're just going to assign a bit of mass to him, and this is a bit of a trial and error thing. So let's assign a mass of 12 and press play again. Now I'm gonna try and move the character again. And as you can see, he doesn't move as ecstatically anymore. Is a bit more controlled. And when I press space, you can see that he is still not heavy enough because when I press space, he is um, flung up a bit too high. So I'm gonna make him even heavier. Let's make him, let's say 50, and uh, we'll see where we stand. So I'm gonna assign a mass of 50 and press save again. And then if I press play, let's see if this mass is okay. So yeah, now when I press jump, uh, you can see I press jump too long there, but let's hope he comes down again. If I press jump for just a very brief moment, then you can see he only jumps a very small amount. And in addition, the movement to the left and right is also fine. It's uh, quite moderate. Um, but one thing you'll notice is that we have no ground check. So at the moment, whenever we press pace, we can make him jump indefinitely high because he doesn't know, um, our player doesn't know when he is on the ground. So we can make him levitate towards the coin. And uh, yeah, so that's not meant to happen. We only want our capsule to jump whenever he uh, is touching the ground. When he is in the air, we don't want him to jump. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So to fix the jumping, we first have to open up our movement script. We made this script in the last episode, which I'll be leaving a link to in the description down below. And within this script, we need to add some sort of ground check. In order to implement this ground check, we first need to define what the ground is. And this can be done using something called a layer mask. So under the header components, we are going to add a public layer mask and we're gonna call it ground layer. 
After that, we're going to add another header, which is going to be called collision, because all the variables that come under this header are going to have something to do with the collision of our player with the ground. The first variable which we're going to add under the collision header is going to be a variable called onGround. This variable is simply going to state whether the player is touching the ground. And in addition, we're also going to add a variable called ground line, which specifies the length of the line which checks for the collision with the ground. Now both these variables which we've added under the collision header are going to make more sense in just a moment, so bear with me. If we now move down to our update function, there's two things that we need to change. The first thing we need to do is we need to set the onGround variable to true whenever the player is standing on the ground. And one way in which we can do this is by using a raycast. A raycast is quite simply a line which goes from one point to another, and the Unity physics system checks if there are any collisions with colliders along the way. And if a collision is detected, it returns true. Let's have a look at the arguments in the raycast function in a little bit more detail. The first argument specifies the origin of the raycast, and the second argument specifies the direction. The third argument specifies the length of our raycast. And this is where the variable ground line, which we created earlier, becomes relevant, because we're going to set the length of our raycast equal to the variable ground line. And finally, the last argument that we add allows us to set a filter. By using a filter, only collisions with certain objects are going to be detected. In this case, it is only going to be the objects which are assigned to the layer ground layer. Next, we need to change the if statement, which is responsible for our jump. At the moment, the player jumps whenever the space key is pressed. However, we're going to change this. Not only does the space key need to be pressed for a jump, but the player also needs to be standing on the ground. So only if the variable space and the variable on ground return true is the jump activated. So let's go ahead and save all the changes which we made to the script file and go back to Unity. And then we are going to select our ground tiles and we're going to assign them to a new layer. And this layer is going to be the layer eight and it is going to be called ground layer. Now, one after another, we can go ahead and select each one of the ground tiles and assign it to the layer ground layer. Next, we can click back onto our player and then in the movement script, we can go ahead to the ground layer tab and select the ground layer. Now I'm going to press play and there are several things that I want to draw your attention to. The first thing is that the on ground variable is set to true, which you can see by this little check mark in this box over here. And the reason why it is set to true is because the raycast that we created earlier is colliding with the collider box of the ground tile. And now when I try to jump, I can't jump indefinitely anymore. I can only begin a jump when I'm actually standing on the ground. And in addition to that, you can also see the small check mark blinks on and off depending on whether I am on the ground or in the air. Now, what I think is really helpful is to actually display the raycast line which we have drawn onto our screen because at the moment it is still invisible. We can show it by opening up the movement script again. And in the movement script, we can add another function. And this function is going to be called on draw gizmos. And in this function, we're going to specify what color we want the line to be. And we're just going to choose blue. And then we're going to use the draw line function to draw a line in the same place as our raycast. So now if we save the script and go back to Unity, you'll be able to see that if we play the game and then click on gizmos, you'll see a small line plop up under our capsule. And it is precisely this line which is checking for the collision with the ground tile. So whenever this line does not cross the hitbox of the ground tile, we're jumping and the on ground variable switches to false. All right, so we're gonna leave it here for this video. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to leave a like. And in the next video, we're going to see how we can animate our character.